what's up welcome back to my channel and if this is your first time welcome to my channel this is 11 tech and i am jamal lee thank you for clicking on this video let's get into it all right so in this video i just want to talk about the surface duo 2 and my setup with this device my home screen and how it looks so let's get into that so first things first i got you know on my lock screen and my home screen i got this background right here this is uh, wallpaper from Windows 11 that comes on a lot of newer devices. It's the dark mode version. I look for a good quality of this and I put it on my Surface Duo because I think it looks really cool. So I have that as my, my lock screen and my wallpaper. And then one thing I also like to do across all my devices, so like my iPad, my Mac mini, you know, whatever else I might have, my tablets, phones, I like to have the same wallpaper to kind of, you know, it's like a continuous theme of like using uh, I don't know, computer devices in synergy with each other. I, I, I like to do that. So yeah, that's just something. But so first things first, let's start with the first page. So as you can see on this side, I have my Google Calendar right here at the bottom. And one thing I like about Google Calendar's widget is that you can interact with it. So you can go to the you know other months to see different days. And then you can also tap on specific days to go to that day and see what events are going on and stuff like that. So I think that's really cool that you can interact with it. And it just makes using this device so much better because I can just quickly tap on, you know, an event or something that I have scheduled and then boom, it opens up on this screen. And then, yeah, I can do something else on the other side. So continue my, my home screen um, browsing or whatever I need to do. So I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, I have that Google Calendar. Then at the top I have, yeah, left, I guess, on this phone screen, I have, holy, I'm just, At the top left on the phone screen, I have the Microsoft To Do app. It's a widget for that. And basically, if I have, you know, I can write down things that I need to do in the day and then it can remind me here. And then you can also like, you can tap it to, to say that you finished the task. So I'm gonna add a task. I'm gonna just do that. And then boom, I added the task and now it's there. So I can click the little circle to check mark saying that I did the task or I can start to, you know, favorite task or whatever. And yeah. And yeah, that's a pretty cool widget that you can interact with all on the home screen. And one thing I like is that you can press the plus to add a task and it doesn't, you know, open the app or anything like that. It doesn't take you out of what you're doing, kind of. You So you can just add the task quick and then boom, you're back into the home screen and doing whatever you want to do. So that's a cool little thing about this widget. And then it also doesn't look too bad. You know, like a lot of these widgets could look better, but I like how, you know, they're rounded edges and stuff like that, uh, except for my Outlook widget and you know i see my emails and stuff like that i can swipe up and down interact with it on the home screen it's all right i don't like the, the square edges of it but it is what it is it's still pretty useful that's my first screen right here and my second screen i have a clock widget up here so i don't actually use the stock clock widget because it takes up too much space so as you can see i hold that and then you can see the the four dots it takes up less space than other um time widgets clock widgets so I'll talk about this widget uh, after, but yeah, so I have that and I have essential apps that I use like most of the time, um, more, uh, most often. So I have calculator, Spotify files. You can see all the apps, you know, social medias that I use like more often than others. Uh, my core Google apps that I use a lot. I have maps, homes, uh, drive, keep notes, some finance apps like what simple trade and Qcoin, Coho. Uh, United Masters to manage different things. So these are apps that I use a lot um, or that I use pretty often, like at least like once a day, I would say. So I have them right here so that as soon as I open my phone, I can just deal with that. And then at the bottom, we got Outlook. Um, we got basically just more essential apps that I can just access at any point on the home screen. Uh, Google Chrome here, I got two cameras. So I got camera, regular uh, camera app, and I got Gcam. So I think for these, Sometimes I prefer the the built-in camera app in terms of like ease of use and I don't know sometimes like when you when I want a different kind of photo or video I, I go to the regular camera app. I feel like they're I don't think Gcam is just a straight better camera app than the stock camera app I think that they both have the use cases or different scenarios where I might prefer one or the other uh, I can't really explain the scenarios yet, but I'll experiment more so that i can explain it later on but yeah sometimes I, I prefer one or the other and then google chrome and settings i feel like settings 
on this phone especially because you can't just swipe down on the home screen to get the the um, notification or the slide swipe down menu I like to just have settings here because I on my other phones I would do that a lot I would swipe down and then go to settings from there but since I can't do that I just have settings right there so yeah that's the first page the clock widget that I use is let me just find it for you it's called digital clock so it's a a green icon like this digital clock and then boom you can customize the, the the clock widget to do different things you can customize how it looks background color or you can have it transparent like how, how i have it um text shadow and stuff like that display time there's so there's a lot of different customizations that you can do uh with this app uh and i uh, one thing i really like is that it's free so i didn't have to pay for anything and I have so much customization but yeah my main issue with other clock widgets is that they just take up so much space for no reason but this one it's as small as it is like the text ends here and so does the the widget box other app other uh, widgets take up like that extra space which is annoying um when you're trying to like uh move things around it so yeah so now onto my second set of pages so right here i got you know a tesla app. i don't have a tesla but you know this is me hoping that one day I can get a Tesla. Right here I have, I have steps. So my my uh, Samsung Health Steps counter. I don't really like how it looks on this on, on Samsung phones. You have a lot more customization with the Samsung widgets. You can take away, you can make it transparent and stuff like that. You can change the shape a little bit better. But this is kind of clunky and it takes up a lot of space uh, for no reason. Because like you see, as you can see, how small the text is versus like the black boxing around it and then i have a screen on time widget just there transparent and then i have some folders of essential things that i uh use um more often than other things that are just here in my, on my phone so some of those things consist of games social medias google apps microsoft apps digital art apps i also put my my photos app in here because why not um finances so finance apps shopping apps and education apps like um duolingo and this writing japanese app that i use and then yeah so just a lot of essential things on my my two my my three um first home screens and then on the other side of this second page i guess if you count both of these together is google keep notes widget so i don't really like this widget how it looks to be honest like it's, it's sharp edges and you can't really do too much to it and then the um the size of it is also it can be kind of like it it's pretty flexible honestly even what you can do but it just doesn't look good next to other widgets or app, or apps around it so i just have it taken up one whole page and it's another interactive widget so i can scroll up and down see all my notes my most you can i think you can change the setting to either pinned yeah it says pinned right there or most recent so i have my pinned notes here and i can scroll through them and then it has a plus where you can add a new note quickly and yeah so i can just jump into my notes and yeah so that's a another widget that i really like that's my setup i guess i'll talk about this too so on the microsoft launcher on surface duo 2 and surface duo you have I forgot what this is called but you have this little side menu thing where you can have you know extra widgets and extra things and then you can also search it's decent actually i think it's a good addition to the launcher and it's not bad so here I have calendar, so you know, showing the date. And sometimes I have different things in my Microsoft calendar versus my Google calendar. And I use them together, basically, on two different accounts. So yeah, there's that. And then I have documents. So what I have on my, I believe this is OneDrive. And then, you know, to-dos. But instead of uh, my day, it's a different list of, of tasks that I need to do. So this is, I think it's called task. That I have it, that's what I have it named. And it has a different list of things that I need to do or want to do. And then sticky notes. So this is like Microsoft sticky notes. Um, and it has drawings from whiteboard on, you know, my Surface devices. And then screen on time. So I haven't really, I don't use this too much, but I decluttered it. So that it's just things that I might actually use, essential things. If you want to see my swipe down menu, what I like to do is I put all my connectivity um, toggles all together and then I put essential things after that things that I use more often than others so I got Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, data hotspot and then I use the auto rotate pretty often I turn it off and on um, link to Windows when I 
you use a, a Windows computer or a laptop, screencast and screen record, and then do not disturb flashlight nearby, battery save, airplane mode, night light. I take everything off that I don't use, so that it's decluttered and just, basically it's priority list. It's, it's ordered by priority. So first priority is getting connected to Wi-Fi. Second is, is Bluetooth and making sure that my devices are connected, like my watch, my earphones. Third is, is data and then hotspot and then et cetera. So priority. Another thing that I could talk about is the keyboard. So when I'm using it in book mode like this, I like to have the keyboard on, you know, a little bit shifted. You can make it shifted to either side of the screen so that it's easier to use with my thumb on whatever side that I'm using it on. So I like to do that. And then in this orientation, I like to have it in floating so that that way my app at the top doesn't get interrupted. But yeah, so I have an app at the bottom and if you don't have your your uh, keyboard on floating mode like this, when you're in this orientation, then it will take up this whole screen and it will push, you know, it might push whatever's at the bottom to the top or it will just disrupt it. And you should like to say you're watching the video, it'll stop the video, or you're playing a game, it'll stop the game, whatever. To prevent the keyboard from taking over the bottom screen, I have it in floating mode so I can just move it however I want. And then I have it adjusted to the size that is comfortable for me. So when I'm type, if I'm typing like this, then it's pretty comfortable to use and I can still move it if I need to, to the top and whatever. And then I can also say I'm watching a video, I can move it to the top and I can type like this pretty comfortably. So yeah, that's how I have my keyboard set up. And then my keyboard in span mode is like, is uh, the split keyboard across the two screens. I feel like this is probably the most comfortable way that you can type when it's when the app is spanned uh, across both screens and you need to type. A uh, floating keyboard might also be good or just having it on one side. Uh, but I, I feel like this is pretty decent. It's actually pretty comfortable to type when it's split like that. So yeah, that is my keyboard orientation, my home screen setup, my wallpaper, everything. So yeah, that is it for now. Thank you for watching this video. If you watched it this far, I appreciate you and a lot more on the way. Stay tuned. Yo, peace.